In the last video, I had created about 250 bullnose pieces and used a wide belt sander to flatten both the tabletop and the legs. In this video, we are going to put all of those pieces together and finally finalize the shape of the base. We are in my garage and I am first going to cut up the board into three segments and with them create the bat wing shape. Now, I've noticed some comments pop up here and there where people are confused with the word batwing. So to catch them up to speed, it's basically the shape of a trapezoid without one side. A while back, I'd made a short form video and asked people what they would call this shape. The batwing was by far the coolest and the most voted for. So that is what I've stuck with ever since. Before we start cutting out the pieces and sticking them together, the first thing I gotta do is cut the last edge of these batwing pieces off. As a rule of thumb, you will almost never see me immediately cut something down to its final length. I always like to cut closer and closer depending on the stage of the project, and I'll only cut something to its final dimension when I reach the point that I absolutely need to. So when I cut the last edge off, it was very close to the final height, but not quite. Of course, because these scrap pieces obviously have a lot of potential, I'm cutting them down to pieces and saving the ones that I think might be useful later on. You never know. And with that extra important step out of the way, I am now going to be cutting the boards into three segments. A short middle piece and two longer ones for the wings. I think you can probably see why we've been calling them bat wings now. And because I have actually mixed pieces up before, I am marking them so that I don't do that later on. Once I got the wing pieces separated, I trimmed them down a little bit more and prepared to make some angle cuts. On the ends of the wings, I'm cutting chamfers, and to do that, I'm gonna be cutting in a way that might make some people a little nervous. Vertically, I can already hear it. This is a very dangerous cut, or why aren't you using a high fence to clamp the piece onto it? And yes, I know I took a little risk on this step, but I assure you that the only reason why I did this is because I was being extra careful and I know what I can handle. One of my wise mentors once said, everyone has a different safety gauge that they follow. And my understanding of that phrase is that there's a big difference between being cocky and understanding your own safety limit. That being said, unless you're experienced and feel safe doing this, I would highly advise against cutting something in this way and instead recommend building a high fence for this process, to which I'll be making a high fence in the near future because it's super useful to have one just like many other jigs. And with those chamfers done, my next step is to cut the angles for where these pieces will connect. If you pay really close attention, you'll see me first cut these angles also into a rough dimension first. And after verifying that I did all of these angles well, that's when I made my final cut. It's really similar to sculpting actually, shaving off bits and pieces at a time until you get it right where you want it to be. And right now, I am making marks for, if you want to guess, I'll give you a second. And if you need a hint, there's something in the frame. And yes. I'm marking where I'll be making domino slots. The height of these bat wings are just tall enough to be awkward to handle. Additionally, gluing together an open-ended segment can get a little tricky. With the help of dominoes, I will have a much more pleasant time aligning these pieces together. Because the connecting angles of the bat wings are at 69 degrees, I was a little bit worried about setting the angle perfectly on the domino fence. I guess it's because I'm so used to doing 90 or 45 degree angle cuts, but with my fantastic eagle eyes, I set it up perfectly and made all the cuts. Once I made all the domino slots, it was time to put it to the test. I dry assembled all the pieces and they fit perfectly. And for the glue up today, I wanted to try out a technique that I once saw another woodworker doing. Instead of putting glue on the surface and inside the domino slots, he glued the dominoes in first. So I laid the wings down and glued the dominoes into those since they are the bigger piece. That way I can just focus on moving around the smaller and lighter middle piece. For tightening, I used masking tape as the initial placeholder and decided to use ratchet straps to try and tighten it. 
which of course I took too far. At this point, my anxiety is shooting up through the roof and I'm literally repeating a bunch of expletives in my head. I rearranged the bat wing into a position where I could open back up the wings and once that was all done, I was able to calm back down. Whenever I have two of the same objects to glue up, I always find that the second one seems to go much smoother and the second bat wing was no different. With the bat wings now in their final shape, it is time to start working on the stretchers. I did get asked in the comments what a stretcher was and that is a very good question. I'm gonna be reading a reply from the Kingston Bear on Instagram because I think he left a really good description. A stretcher is a horizontal support element of a table, chair, or other item of furniture, normally made of exposed wood and ties vertical elements of the piece together. And in this case, they'll be connecting the bat wings together as well as supporting the tabletop. To process this long piece, I first grab the straight piece of plywood and then use a router to flush trim one of the edges. I I did this instead of using the joiner because it is much easier to move a 5 to 10 pound router than it is to move an 8 feet long piece that might weigh about 40 to 50 pounds. After establishing a flat edge, I then cut it in half on the table saw. And surprise surprise, one of the boards crooked which basically means its edge has warped. No matter what you do to prevent these situations, some boards will still warp from time to time, and it becomes a matter of knowing how to deal with it. Since the other board stayed straight and I implemented my technique of cutting little by little, I still had some wiggle room to cut from. So I used a straight board to establish an edge and flush trim the crooked one. With their widths now narrower than 6 inch, I then proceeded to join and plane them like normal. Now that the stretchers are good to go, it's time to start creating the stretcher slots on the bat wings. I put both bat wings on the table saw because it is my one and only true flat surface in the shop and started working on marking where the slots would be located. I really took my time on this step because I wanted to get these stretchers perfectly perpendicular. And after getting the placement just right, I used both blue tape and a marking knife to mark my spots. Low key, I was actually very proud of my use of markings and blue tape. After getting the positioning where I needed it, it was now time to think about how I was going to clear out the space. A full dado or a half lap? A full dado means essentially making one deep slot on the bat wing. With a half lap joint, that'd be cutting half out of the bat wing, half out on the stretcher, and then linking them that way. I contemplated between these options for quite a while, but in the end, I decided to go with the dado cut. While there are a lot of advantages by going the half lap route, I would really have to put a lot of considerations into how the bull noses are laid out. I'd have to do a lot of extra cuts for individual pieces and I really just wanted the bullnose attaching process to be a little more mindless. So having one difficult step instead of a lot of intricate steps was the winner in my book. Even with the direction decided, there were still so many ways I could have tackled this process. I could use a track saw, the table saw with a robust crosscut sled, or use a router as far as I could go and finish it off with some hand tools. After further contemplation, and this time I'll spare you the explanation of why I didn't go all the other directions, I decided to go with routing and hand tools, despite the fact that hand Hand tools are my biggest weakness. With a jig, I installed a flush trim bit on the router and started routing away. This took some time, but the process was super smooth. Once it came time to use the hand tools, that was a different story. These bat wings had two specific complications. Number one, they are positioned at an angle. So even if I laid them down on the workbench to chisel, I could only go so far before I would need to put them back into an upright position. Number two, when I put them in a standing position, I have nothing to clamp them tightly against in order to establish stability. One strategy that I eventually figured out was to butt the bat wing against the workbench leg. I also put a piece of plywood between the bat wing and the workbench so that I wouldn't accidentally damage the chisel by stabbing into the metal leg or something. This hand tool portion took me a long time and I felt like I'd aged about 10 years just from this process alone. But eventually, I got it done. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode. And I wanted to say thank you to everyone who's given me a lot of encouragement about not only talking about, but also showing you my weakness in hand tools. I know. 
Trust me, I know that my tools should be sharp. I know that there were better tools in certain situations, but this is where I'm at currently in my woodworking journey, specifically my hand tools. This is for a client and it just wasn't the time to be trying a technique or a tool that I wouldn't be 100% comfortable with. I did things that were less efficient, but I did what I knew would get it done with my limits. Many of you have left a bunch of tricks and tips for me, so I will be planning on a small project here and there where I only use hand tools to continue practicing. It was embarrassing and honestly, quite scary to show the world the weakness of mine, but dang it. This entire channel is built on being authentic and I'm committed to sticking to that. So to everyone that's been understanding and sending kind words my way, I appreciate it. And don't worry, five years from now, Clara Kim's gonna be on a whole nother level than what you see today. Last but certainly not least, I wanted to give a shout out to my newest Patreon members, Jess and John. Thank you so much for supporting my journey and this channel. And if you are interested in doing the same for as little as a cup of coffee, do consider Patreon as one of those options. Until next time, see ya. Thank you.